Hello everyone, welcome to Unknown History, the channel where you can learn about unknown vehicles and events of the past. So put on your helmet and hold on tight because today we will go on a very bumpy ride thanks to these unknown military vehicles. Before I start the lesson, I just want to let everyone know that there is not a lot of information on these vehicles due to their rarity, so this video will be rather short. Or not. Also, since there are no videos of the vehicles I will be talking about, I will be showing a video of a Bovington Tank Museum tour in the background of this video. As you can tell by the title of this video, I will be talking about articulated vehicles and not just normal ones. I will be talking about the rarest ones I could find. So let's get started with the Udez XX20. In the beginning of the 1980s, the Swedish Defense Material Administration, aka Udez, located in Stockholm, constructed a prototype of a 20-ton articulated light tank for the Swedish military. The task of Udez was to collect, process, coordinate, and present feasibility studies in the field of combat vehicle systems, so they came up with an articulated design which allows two completely different armored hulls to be connected with the shafts. The front hull houses the three crew members and the unmanned turret, armed with the famous 120mm L44 Rheinmetall smoothbore cannon constructed by a German company. The cannon was also outfitted with a Bofors muzzle brake for reduced recoil. Also, the rear hull just housed a 600 horsepower Detroit diesel engine. Unfortunately, the mobility trials show that 20 tons combat weight is not good for mobility in soft terrain conditions for an articulated vehicle, so in the end the whole project was scrapped. Only one XX-20 remains intact and it is located in the Arsenal Tank Museum in Sragnäs, Sweden. And now on to the next weird yet amazing tank. So let me introduce you to the Lockheed and Forsyth tank. Yes, you heard me right. Lockheed. Lockheed designed a tank. Well, tried to. Having won a tank design competition with their design at the end of 1962, the Forsyth Brothers and Lockheed Aircraft Corporation were anxious to secure and market the idea of an articulated tank design. The result was an embodiment in the patent application filled in January 1963, but there was nothing in that application other than the layout. What it showed was a small tank with five road wheels on each side, topped with a low-profile rounded turret. Inside that turret can be seen one large caliber gun and a smaller secondary armament. Most striking in that design, though, is what is behind the tank. A trailer. Not just any trailer, in fact, but another tracked hull. These two sections connected together through an articulated joint. The details of the articulated design would be made clear in a following application filled in July that year. And now, onto the armament. So, as shown in the patents, there were two weapons mounted onto the tank, and later a third. Weapon mounted onto the following unit. The tank's weapons consisted of a single large caliber gun of an undisclosed size in the patent, although it bears a close resemblance to a gun like that on the M551 Sheridan, the 152mm. The secondary armament, as it appears in the patents, appears to be a cannon, but is only described as, a, as the secondary armament for the anti-personnel purpose. No mention is made of the third gun in the back, which could be assumed to be a machine gun in their competition entry. The secondary gun is confirmed as a 20mm Hispano Suiza autocannon in the front of the vehicle, and the small turret at the back is confirmed to take a 762 Vulcan type machine gun, which would be a minigun basically. Although being self powered and able to operate independently of the following unit, the unit behind contained more men. The four men in the back acted as a small armored personnel carrier team attached to the main tank and accessed it via a door at the back. They could egress the vehicle to fight or carry out tasks dismounted. And in the final patent publication drawings, this following unit had gained a small turret with a gun as so as to provide additional firepower. As part of a platoon of such tanks, the men in the rear sections would end up being a unit 15 to 40 strong without the need for additional APCs to follow. Depending on the armor outfitted to this tank, it was thought to weigh in at 22 to 32 tons. No engine was ever installed due to the tank ever being built, but it was planned to get a diesel piston or a gas turbine engine with an electric transmission. The design of the Forsyth Brothers and Lockheed was in many ways ahead of its time. 
During the early 1960s, the concept of using composite armor was still new thinking. There were, however, serious problems to overcome. Lighter than the M551 Sheridan, this design offered increased protection and capability and the potential for inf improved firepower, but it was unlikely to ever have received serious consideration. By the time the first patent was filed, the U.S. Army's eyes were on the XM551 project, which offered a lot of what they wanted without having to use new and as of yet unproven technologies. The potential offered by this design was thus lost. It received no orders and was never built. Coupled vehicles would continue to be examined by a variety of countries for a variety of purposes, as would coupled tanks, an electric drive, and composite hulls. This design, however, seems to be the first design to combine all of these elements in one. And now, for the last articulated tank I will be talking about, and let me tell you, this one is by far the coolest yet dumbest looking one yet. So get ready for the Astron Super Heavy Tank. Not much is known about this tank. In fact, I could not find any information whatsoever besides pictures. So I will just tell you things about it that I could see from just looking at pictures. Let's start from the front and work our way to the back. Here we have a whole gun, which I think is an M1919 Browning machine gun. Uh, up next is the midsection turret armed with another M1919 machine gun. Now let's go to the turret, which is, in my opinion, is like an M46 patent turret, but on steroids. On this turret, we have two more M1919 machine guns. I have no idea what the cannon on this thing is, but my best guess is that it's a 120mm T53 L60 rifled gun taken from the American T34 heavy tank. And lastly, up top, we have the Commander's Cupola that is armed with yet another M1919 uh, and an M2 Browning machine gun next to it because you can't have an American tank without an M2 Browning on top, right? And that is pretty much it for this tank. Um, like I said, there's not a lot of information I could find on this tank, so yeah. <laughs> Thank you for watching. And please let me know in the comment section down below if I made any mistakes and or if there is any vehicle you would like for me to talk about. All sources to the information I got on these tanks will be in the description, including a link to the Bovington Tank Museum tour video.